Dark bleatings, everybody. We're back with part six, part six of uh, ranking every Stephen King fiction book. So we're doing novels and short story collections. We're now on to my top 30 and I've been so excited to get here because uh, there's nothing that I love more than talking about books. Uh, and especially when we're getting into like my favourite Stephen King books. If you um, haven't seen any of the previous parts, I will link them in the description below if you would like to watch these in order. We're going in reverse order from worst to best and we're going through Stephen King's whole fiction catalogue. To date, the last book he released was Fairy Tales. So the next one that's coming out uh, um, shortly in a couple of months, I think, is Holly. So we're up to Fairy Tale um, in his releases, and so that's how far we've gone. Uh, those certainly were some words, weren't they? So um, let's just go straight in. Um, number 30 um, is Wizard and Glass, which is uh, book four in the Dark Tower series. Um, I won't talk too much about this one because uh, it's, you know, midway, literally slap bang in the middle of a book series, so I don't want to tell you where, you know, Roland and the gang are, um, in case you know you don't want to know yet. Uh, but this one does start with um, a section on Blaine the Mono, and uh, Blaine the Mono is just like one of my favourite Stephen King imaginings uh, of all time. It's just so much fun. So, yeah, I really, really loved this book. I thought it was great. Um, not my favourite Dark Tower book, but, you know, not too far off in the grand scheme of all of the Stephen King works. So that is number 30. Number 29 is Needful Things. Uh, this is a, a Castle Rock story. It's about a mysterious store that suddenly opens up and everyone feels drawn to it because in this store, happens to be the thing they desire the most or they need the most or whatever whatever it might be like a baseball card or I can't remember what the other items are now and it's run by a guy called Leland Gaunt whose method of trading his ways is a little unusual he's not really a money kind of guy he asks people for favours um, and initially they seem a bit funny these favours and not connected but uh, it starts creating it starts to seem like each favor is the is a part of something um Leland Gaunt is one of the best Stephen King villains in my opinion I think he's really really underrated and he gets forgotten a lot when people are making lists so um yeah this just this book goes into chaos um yeah really really uh enjoyed it uh uh uh, uh. I'm trying so hard to stop with the ums and ers but it's really difficult uh Moving on to the next one before I can do it again. At number 28, we have The Dark Half. So this is about a guy who writes under a pseudonym. He decides that he doesn't want to write under this particular pseudonym anymore and he tries to kill him. And the pseudonym doesn't want to die. <laughs> so uh, this, this kind of felt sort of like a meta kind of joke on Stephen King's part because he you know writes under the pseudonym Richard Bachman or he used to and the Bachman books tend to be a bit darker in tone and a bit nastier than the typical Stephen King book does and uh, in general are not very uplifting stories uh most of the th I'm trying to think of any that are he did originally plan to release Pet Cemetery as a Bachman book I think and then I think he changed his mind so this this goes a little crazy there's some supernatural elements and uh there, there's all sorts of um weirdness in this little fella but it's a great time it's a great book i flew through this one the premise is a bit silly for some but you know yeah if you're sort of a constant stephen king fan that's probably fine next up at number 27 we have Cycle of the Werewolf, which is a sort of little illustrated novella with the artwork uh, done by Bernie Wrightson, who is amazing. Um, now, you may be wondering why I decided to include Cycle of the Werewolf when I have excluded the other sort of visual storytelling, like um, visual storytelling, that's film. Um, I've excluded, you know, the Marvel Dark Tower comics and I said I wasn't doing any graphic novels. Um, and the reason that I've made an exception for this 
is because um, I wanted to talk about it. So, you know, and it's my list and I thought, I will just one, just sneak one little little guy in there, it'll be fine. So I won't show you much of the artwork because obviously there are spoilers about the plot in the artwork. I'll just show you the the first the first picture. Um I really loved looking at these pictures. So this is the the first picture in the um I believe some trivia that this was released as a calendar um with a little illustration and a little part of the story like a little chapter of the story for each month and in the chapters are laid some words the chapters are laid out like this you know with the appropriate month highlighted and obviously we're going through like a lunar cycle here uh i just really really loved this um it's a really short read it's really nice um uh, to browse the pictures i i always I, I pick it up off my shelf quite often and just have a little peruse of the art in here um i love werewolf stories and stephen king has written hardly any there's this and then there's um wolf from the talisman and i believe are they wolves in the dark tower or am I taking wolves as a colour too literally in my memory? In any case, there are not enough werewolf stories, not just from King, but in general. Um, I read a great one by um, an author called Cece Adams called Downwind Alice. Um, there's Red Moon by Benjamin Percy and I read a couple of others. Mad Dog by uh, Justin Park or J.R. Park, that's a great one. But I am severely lacking in um, werewolf novels and pr preferably um, adult horror rather than, um, you know, paranormal romance or anything like that. Um, not that there's anything wrong with like, you know, werewolf romance, but it's just not my bag. I would, it's the same as, um, it's quite hard to find horror adult horror about witches in film that's it's harder than if i'm trying to make a list of like my top 10 witch films and i'm struggling to find 10 witch films um if you discount cults because people lump them in together and they, they're a different they're a different beast in my opinion um yeah if anyone has any recommendations for um why did i say it like that recommendations <laughs> If anyone has any recommendations for um, werewolf novels or witch films or novels, that would be really appreciated because I'm always on the hunt for those. I absolutely love werewolves and witches. Where are they? Zombies and vampires absolutely everywhere. Werewolves and witches hiding. At number 26 we have Later. Now I'm as surprised as anyone else that there's a hard case um, book in this in this part of the list because I did say in my previous videos I didn't I really didn't like the Colorado words I really didn't like the Colorado kid um that was in my bottom 10 and then uh what was the other one called I forget oh Joyland Joyland was okay but it's yeah I, I, I probably well, I'm not gonna go back to that one but this one really surprised me because this felt more like a tr sort of regular Stephen King book as opposed to one that's more crime slanted it does have a lot of crime in it we're following a little boy whose mother in his relationship with someone who turns out to be quite antagonistic to our main character and the little boy sees dead people um and that might sound familiar and it is acknowledged that that's a familiar in the book so um I think this was more of a sort of an homage or at least an acknowledgement that he didn't come up with the concept of a kid seeing dead people uh, there are a few little meta jokes in here about that but um it was just so good I flew through it very very short for a Stephen King read so if you do have you know depending on your reading speed if you do have a nice wide open morning or afternoon or something you could probably just get through this um, also there's a sort of Stephen King universe tie-in in this which I was so excited about because I just wasn't expecting it so uh, yeah this is a really great one I probably will go back and reread it I really really enjoyed it a lot of um, great real world horror and supernatural horror in that one and you know Stephen King's pretty good when with like an A plot and a B plot running simultaneously and I think that both work really well in that book. At number 25 we have the OG! <laughs> this is Carrie, this is his first published novel. Um, a lot of people, I'm just, sorry, I'm just spouting off trivia wherever I remember it. Um, a lot of people think this is like, hit the first Neville, ne this is the first Neville he ever wrote. Um, this is the first novel he ever wrote, as people think. And for that reason, I've heard a lot of people refer to Stephen King as an overnight success. And this was not the first novel he wrote. This is just the first one that he thought 
was good enough to be published and it's the one that actually got picked up that his agent managed to sell so it was a roaring success though it was really different it came out in the 70s obviously the movie right sold that always really helps boost uh that really helps to boost book sales as you can imagine if the movie does well uh, the movie was done by Brian De Palma. I really like it. Not so much a fan of the remake. Uh, I didn't really see the need for it because contextually school bullying or unhappy home life, teenage girl going through puberty with with added telekinetic powers um you know these are all normal things that we all go through um i didn't really think it needed an update and also i really like chloe grace moretz and i rate her but i just thought she was way too conventionally pretty for me to buy that everyone in her school was sort of showing her aside sissy spacek in the original um because she was you know like a lesser known actor as well and she's not, I, I'm not saying that Sissy Spacek isn't pretty, I think she's beautiful, but I could see how if you put her next to what's considered conventionally beautiful, um, I could, be, you know, I she sold that part to me, I really believed her, whereas Chloe Grace Moretz, you look at her and you're like, oh my god, she's so cute, like I could see her as a cheerleader maybe in this film, um, but anyway, sorry, I, I digress, um, so yeah uh carrie's a great read it's uh the the storytelling format is interesting it's interspersed with you know news clips and things like that um and you know everyone knows the story of carrie by now she gets her period really late is very scared her mum hasn't even told her about periods she's a crazy religious zealot that makes her life miserable um and uh the bullying pushes carrie to an extreme action towards the end which is great uh you i really felt for her i i, I suppose technically we should be viewing carrie as a villain but i just don't i view her mum margaret white as the villain and she's a product of the villainy all around her i mean what she does in the end might be a slight overreaction speaking of murder um as we were just with carrie um is the next book on the list it's full dark no stars which is a murder themed um novella collection there are four stories in it uh, the first one is 1922 um uh, which just fills me with images of rats and wells and it was adapted on netflix um with thomas jane and uh, if you put thomas jane and a stephen king thing together for me that's always gonna work um, the next story is Fear Extension and honestly I do not remember that one at all but I'm sure if I just started reading the first page it would come flooding back to me but it, it obviously wasn't my favourite. Um, the next story is Big Driver which is really hard to read and just fair warning. Um, the catalyst of, of that plot is a fairly graphic sexual assault and um, it's really really hard to read um, normally it really bothers me when that is used as a plot device for a female character but for whatever reason I'm not sure if it's because of what happens after I really enjoyed the story it was adapted into a film and it's really good but again they don't they don't shy away from like the really horrible stuff in that so if that's something that's going to really bother you I would completely skip over the story because there's no way of not feeling impacted by it when you're reading it um great story though and then the last one is my favorite in the book and it's one of my favorite um Stephen King stories and it's a good marriage it's about a, um, a married couple that have been together a long time and the husband works away a lot um and everything seems really rosy and perfect and then one day while he's away <laughs> Um, she discovers something about him that is potentially quite a big problem um, and yeah it's it's so great it, she's um she's one of my favorite characters uh, which might sound strange because you might notice I'm not saying her name and it's because I've forgotten it I want to say Joan but I know that's not right um, <laughs> um but it's a it's a really really great story and it's a, this is such a strong collection it's like it's definitely up there for me i think um yeah definitely something i would reread and dip in and out of and i highly highly recommend it if you um more into like stephen king's real world horror um this is a great book getting near the end of this list now already um next up at 23 we have the green mile which was originally released in these little like chapbooks and i think they came out fortnightly 
fortnightly fortnightly or monthly i'm not sure because i you know i wasn't really around at the time that much uh, i was young um so the green mile i'm sure everyone knows the story of this it's about a guy called john coffee who's convicted of murdering adorable twin girls and he's sent to death row which they call the green mile and you've got a whole host of characters in this you've got the prison guards and then you've also got other prisoners and i I, oh, also, yeah, you have Mr. Jingles, the mouse, and he's my favourite of all. Um, and if you've seen the film and you liked Mr. Jingles, then you'll probably love the book because there's more of Mr. Jingles in the book that they, you know, omitted from the film. So I, I love this. It's such a nice. Um, it's really heartbreaking and sad, but it's also really beautiful. And I just feel like, for a story that's set on death row, where the inmates have presumably committed like the worst crimes possible um this story feels like it's about love to me and human companionship it's empathy um it's a really special story uh, i know everyone who's a stephen king fan knows that stephen king is responsible for the green mile but a lot of people who are just fans of the film that don't read his work are surprised when you tell them that um, it's it's great. Uh, Percy is probably one of the most detestable characters that has ever been put to a page. Um, uh, I was invested, you know, even if I didn't like the main characters, but which I did, I loved them, um, I would have been invested just hoping that Percy was getting some comeuppance. So yeah, that it's a really 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 great story. I absolutely like, flew through it in one sitting, I couldn't put it down, I absolutely loved it. Um, the film adaptation by Frank Darabont is amazing. He's so good at adapting King's work. He also did The Shawshank Redemption and The Mist. Um, if you, it's it's a really faithful adaptation. So I have heard people say like, if you've seen the film, there's no point reading the book because it follows the book so closely. Uh, I disagree. Uh, there's a bit more in the book, and reading it is a different experience to seeing it. So I think that they're both completely worthwhile. Um, but the Green Mile is amazing, and in some form or other, you should experience it. Number twenty-two is Dolores Claiborne, which is another non-horror. Um, book by Stephen King and I do normally really lean towards his horror more but I love Dolores Claiborne uh, as a character she's one of my favorite characters that he's ever created this book uh, is told in the style of she's been arrested for a crime and this is her giving her account um, it has it's written um, very interestingly in that it's sort of just one it's just sort of one stream of consciousness consciousness conscious consci consciousness no that's not right consciousness <laughs> no 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 it's one stream of conscious it's a this book has no chapters it's just one long big thing um normally that would really annoy me that there's no natural stopping point um however i really believe that this book is written like I feel like it's meant to be read in one sitting, if that makes sense. So I would recommend, you know, clear your schedule and just sit, buckle down with it and go through it. It's a really great story. Dolores is really funny in the way that she tells certain things and describes certain people. And I was really on board with her. I liked her personality so much that if it turned out that she had done a horrible crime, I, I was still going to be on her side. So um, I can't tell you if she has done the crime, if she hasn't done the crime, what the crime is. But um, I really, really recommend this. If this is one of those ones where you ha you don't fancy picking it up because like me, you prefer his horror stuff and you you know stray away from his other genres um i would maybe just try and break that wall down and give dolores a go um it's a really really great read number 21 and the last book on this list for today we have firestarter uh i absolutely loved this i was really surprised by how much i loved it because i did see the um film adaptation when i was a kid and I do remember it, I do remember liking it, but I just didn't think I was going to love the story so much in book form because um, I wasn't a massive fan of the film, so I was surprised. I will say before I go on to sing its many praises that there is a problematic character in my opinion and um, I felt the need to point this out with Thinner. Um, there's a Native American character called Rainbird and I can't help it, I feel like the depiction of him is a little bit... Um, 
racially insensitive, shall we say. Memory serves, he is the only person in the book that isn't white, and then like the really good, pure, innocent characters are all white, and then he's villainous, and also we're quite, um, we're constantly reminded that he's Native American, and we're also constantly reminded that he's evil, and it's sort of, um, you, you see why this starts reading as a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, I do overall love the book, but I do cringe reading his scenes a bit. The reason that I brought it up is just because I am a, you know, a Stephen King super fan, um, but I don't just blindly ignore um, things that I think are problems in his work sometimes. Like, every now and then I'm really enjoying a book and then I get come across something and I'm like, ooh, <laughs> oh no, Stephen! <laughs> After reading his entire body of work, as I have now, um, overall I do not get the sense that he actually has like um, like prejudices against any particular people. I just think that it just seems to me that sometimes, especially in his earlier work, some ignorance has gone into his writing. But um, I read most of his work in publication order, so I read it like in the order it was released and I have seen quite an improvement with how he um, presents uh, people in uh, minorities, for example, or people with disabilities and things like that. So I do think that he makes a concerted effort. Uh, no one is gonna be perfect. Uh, Rainbird is bad though. Rainbow bad. Um, so, let me get on to the positives about the book. What's it about, I hear you ask? Well, uh, this is about a father and daughter who are on the run because they both have paranormal abilities and they're being pursued by an institution called The Shop that wants to use them for their paranormal abilities and they don't want to be used. And The Shop is a really heinous organisation that has done something terrible to this family already. So they are to be feared and unfortunately they are very powerful they're sort of like a faction of the government the american government or are they yeah 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 that's right i remember in that right i'm pretty sure correct me if i'm wrong um charlie is just such a wonderful child and stephen king's writing of children i think is always really strong i used to work in a family holiday park so i would spend time like every week i was with up to like a thousand kids literally and they they turn a phrase the things that they get stressed about um the things they celebrate and yeah just their wording in general really amuses me um kids are absolutely wonderful and i feel like stephen king's like kid characters are really authentically written they feel so real to me uh, i was very very invested in charlie i was very worried about what might happen to her or her dad sorry the, the cat's asking for attention <laughs> you say hi bird Oh, you're such a beautiful boy. Oh, buddy. Are you all happy? Look at your little tail. Um, sorry, if he wants attention, he gets attention. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, we follow them. Um, ow, he bit me. Um, yeah, so we're following this father and daughter and uh, panicking all the while, but it's such a great book. Uh, like with Thinner, I find this a really great but problematic time. <laughs> that's how I phrased it last time. Um, okay, that's the um, end of these rankings. We've only got two videos left because now we're going into my top 20. I am super, super excited about that. Um, very quickly before I end the video, I want to ask your advice. Um, I would really like to move off filming on my phone and start filming with my computer uh, or maybe with even with a camera I don't know I'm gonna save up a little bit of money maybe um, if anyone has any advice on what's good to use like whether I could just use my my laptop webcam um, or if I need sound or whatever or software editing software as well i use CapCut right now um i don't know if there's anything better than that that i could get for my laptop uh, i'd really appreciate uh, any advice about that because i'm a little bit of a noob and uh, i don't know and the other thing i would like to ask is if any of these books are in your top 10 or bottom 10 um or you absolutely hate any of those or absolutely love them i would really really love it if you talk about them in the com in the blah, blah, blah. talk about it in the comments i couldn't remember the word comment then for some reason i'm a little tired and excited because i'm going to a book convention today um ugh. God, sometimes i talk so fast i can't remember what i was talking about 
yeah um, I really love it if you would discuss the books in the comments with me because obviously as you can probably tell I really 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 love talking about books and I love filming these videos for that reason because I get to just sit here talking about books however it would be really nice if um sometimes some I had someone um to talk to um in a two-way conversation <laughs> that would be nice um so yeah those are the rankings for today i'll see you next sunday with um our number 20 to 11 and then after that we're going 10 to 1 so i'm really really excited have a great day and i will see you next time